Okay, so we want to solve a pro an example in two different ways, and we'll see uh, how the two different ways are, are different in terms of the steps that you need to do to solve the problem. Of course, in the end, the answer is the same, but the steps that you follow will be a bit different. So method one is very systematic. You use the force law that you we, we derived before, we mentioned before, and we explained that if you want to get the force on charge two due to charge one, for instance, Ke q1 q2 over r squared r hat 1 2 where q1 and q2 are the charges with their signs you have to keep the signs r is the distance between the charges and r hat 1 2 points from 1 to 2 if you're able to use this law properly you'll be able to get the correct force with automatically with the correct direction with the correct magnitude and everything the problem has three charges. One of them is at the origin, Q1, and Q3 is located over here. And those have the same value and they're positive charges. Q2 is a negative charge and it's located over here. And it has a minus two microcoulomb charge. And these two charges are on top of each other on the y-axis separated by distance A. And then you go a distance A here to get to the third charge. So this distance is the same as this distance. That means this is root two of A. So they, they, the charges exist on a triangle, the way shown here. So the question is asking, what's the total force on charge 3? So first, we know that to get the total force on a charge, you have to get the force due to charge 1 and due to charge 2. Let's get the, the force on 3 due to, one, due to 2. How would you write that down in a very formal way? Well, we write down that the force on 3 due to 2 is ke q2 q3 over the distance squared r hat 2 3 where r hat 2 3 is a vector that points from 2 to 3 it's a unit vector okay so what is r hat 2 3 in this particular problem what is the unit vector that points from charge 2 to charge 3 in this particular geometry and you should see that the r hat 2 3 vector is just pointing along the x direction so it's just i hat so it's very simple so now the charge q2 is negative the charge q3 is positive and so let's substitute all the values that we know for for this equation but without putting numbers in just in terms of symbols so q2 is is a negative charge so i'll write it as minus magnitude of q2 q3 is a positive charge i'll write it as plus magnitude of q3 the distance r23 is just a, so I'll put a squared. And r hat 23, as we said, it's just i hat. Okay, so if you just multiply out and just simplify the expression a bit and put the minus sign with the minus i hat with the i hat vector, so this shows that the direction of the force on 3 due to 2 is exactly in the direction that you predict it would be. It points to the left, because all this is positive. So it points to the left, and you know that the, the force on a positive charge is towards the negative charge. Opposite charges attract. So this turns out the way you expect. As we said, it comes out automatically. Okay, what about now if you want to get the force on 3 due to charge 1? How would you write this down very officially, very systematically? You put down the force on 3 due to 1 is Ke Q1 Q3 over R13 squared R hat 13, where R hat 13 is a unit vector that points from 1 to 3, the way it's shown here. Now, what is r hat 1, 3 for this particular case? Think about it. Well, if you look at the geometry, this angle is 45 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees, so you have a vector that has length 1, magnitude 1, and you want to get resolve it into its x and y components. So when you get a vector with magnitude 1, you get the magnitude times cosine 45 plus the magnitude times sine 45 in the j direction. And since the magnitude is 1, it doesn't, doesn't appear at all, it's just 1. So you get cosine 45 for the x component and sine 45 for the y component. So the unit vector can be easily written in terms of i and j uh, with the appropriate multiplicative factor. So then write this all these terms and see what they are uh, what how we can simplify them so q1 and q3 are positive charges 
So I can write it as plus magnitude of Q1 and plus magnitude of Q3. R hat 1, 3 is this. We just showed it. Now the distance between 1 and 3 is this distance. It's the square root of 2a. So keep it as square root of 2a and then take all squared. Just to do things systematically. Okay, so when you multiply out, you get two terms. You get an I component and a J component. So this is what the force on 3 due to 1 is. And as you see, the I component is positive and the J component is positive. So the force points in this quadrant. Okay, now if you want to get the total force on 3, we said the principle of superposition says you get the force on 3 due to 1 and you add it to the force on 3 due to 2. You add them as vectors. So we got the first vector, we got the second vector, now you have to add them as vectors, which means you add the i components together and you add the j components together. This one doesn't have a j component, so you just have this term here. So that gives you the total force on 3. Only in the last step where you start to substitute numbers. There's no reason to substitute numbers from the beginning. You'll just make errors and you'll propagate your errors and when you come to uh, check your, pro your, your problem if you made a mistake. You won't be able to find the mistake when you substitute numbers. So just leave everything as symbols in the proper way. And then in the last step, you could just have to put this into the calculator, look at the numbers that were given, and put all these numbers into the calculator, and you'll get the value of minus 1.1 newtons for this term, and you'll get plus 7.9 newtons for this term. So that's the end of the problem. You found the force on 3. It has an I component, a negative I component. It has a positive J component. If you want to picturize what's going on, you can see this. This is the force on 3 due to 2. This is the force on 3 due to 1. When you add the two vectors, remember, adding the two vectors, it's as if you take this vector and you shift it over here. So you go from here to here to here. So the resultant vector geometrically points this way. Algebraically, we got it. It's this vector. It has a negative i component and it has a positive j component. So that's the end of the problem.